Okay, everybody, this is John. This is an album battery. This has been in my wife's car for a very long time, and then one day it just wouldn't start the car. So I dumped the acid out and filled this with the mixture that I gave you on the internet. As you can see, there is no green eye in the battery. So the solution is different. So what I'm going to do is this is a 590 cold cranking amp battery which is equivalent to an amp, uh, a 30 amp hour battery basically and what I'm going to do is start the load dyno and right away you can see you have a green light and you can see that this is going to draw about one amp, one watt with a fan, this is a self-powered box so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on my chart the 30 amp hour battery and I'm going to run it at a, a 3 amp rate for discharge which would be in the C10 so this first button we're going to go ahead and, and use the second button which is going to put it at somewhere around 6 amps. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And right away you can see that this battery is going to find some place to sit. Since this battery is 8 years old. Anyway, you can see what it's going to do on the chart. So I want to make it clear right away, this is considered a throwaway battery. So, but we use it here for testing. So, we're going to let these two meters do their calculating. We're going to run the load out and see now. When this gets down to 10 volts, this red light will come on and disconnect the load from the battery. But, let's just follow through and see what happens. Hello everybody, John and Chuck. We got a battery over here that came out of my wife's Mustang. It's a 590 cold cranking amp. And when she took the car in to Ford, they said no way. And uh, she had to get another battery. So. You know what a Mustang battery costs, and it wasn't cheap. Anyway, that's where it's sitting after I converted it to Elm. And this is our load box that we build. So what I'm going to do is start the load box. And we're going to let the meters sort of correspond with each other. Actually, I'm going to go by this meter up here because it's going to do the data logging on the computer here. And the uh, load box is self-powered. And we have this, this chart. So a 590 cold cranking amp, amp battery is equivalent to a 30 amp hour battery and that's it. So right away with the fan on you can see that it's drawing power because this whole box is being powered by this battery. So what I'm going to do is show you what it's going to do under a 50 amp load. Now, here is 24 amps, and then if I add all of these together, it's a 50 amp load. So here we go. And you can hear right away that it's going down. And so we're just going to leave it at that 50 amps, and you watch this very closely. See, that's way more than enough to start your car because it's going to be 500 amps instantaneous. So we're going to leave it on this 50 amp load. Now there's no lead acid in this battery and you can see by the light, by the window here, that there's no green indication. And then I'm going to show you that it takes a charge from a conventional charger. So we're going to watch this. When this battery reaches 10.5 volts, this green light's going to go off. It's going to shut the machine off and come back to green because the battery is going to recover. 
And you can see the chart right here, what's happening. Now I'm going to tell you once again, because I don't want anybody to make a mistake about this. This battery right here was considered useless by Ford Mortar Company. And so I took the battery, bought a new one, and converted it to Elm. And, it, and Chuck and I have been using it ever since. So look at what it's doing. Under a 50 amp load. Now at this voltage, you don't quite have 50 amps with these resistors. So what I'm going to do is, Chuck, you want to turn this meter on? And put it on these cables so they can see it here that the load box is really doing what I say. Okay, now I'm back and you can see that it's found a plateau here. And you can see it by watching the chart. So, that's the real voltage being measured by the meter that's on the output of this. And uh, you can see that I hit it with a 50 amp load and it immediately came out. It's like running a golf cart, like stepping on the pedal on a golf cart until you get going. And so I'm just going to leave it here. And I'm going to leave it at 41.1 amps. And we're going to see how long this goes. And there is no lead acid in this battery. This battery was washed out, cleaned out set for a day with still distilled water, dumped again, washed out again, and filled with a 10% solution of L. So, trying to get, I got a real heater right here, right now, coming out of this box. And so we're just going to see how long it goes. And I'll be back. Alright, I'm back now. And as you can see, I'm down to 1092. Actually, 1096, because then we go by this meter here. And you can see how the battery's curve is. In fact, it almost looks like a NICAD in the curve. If you do the curves on a NICAD battery. And you can see we're still at 40.1 amps continuous. And so I'm just putting the screws to this battery that was going to be thrown in a pile. Just to give you an example that what happens when you convert them. And then I'll show you a newer battery that was bad right off the shelf after this one. I'll do another posting on this battery. So this has been converted to L, 10% mixture. So when this load box gets to the right point, what's going to happen is it's going to know that and shut itself off, and those blue lights will go off. But it's continuous on the 50 amp load setting. And now you can see we're starting to fall. It doesn't do much better. So, I'll be back again. Okay, I'm back here. And the battery is about... Any minute you're going to watch this. And then it's going to decide. After it takes voltage. There you go. So now we're going to let it sit. And we're going to watch how it recovers, then I'm going to show you to take a charge on a normal charger. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, the battery basically has come up and sat at about 12, every once in a while, 12 one. And that corresponds to this meter, and there's no current being drawn. And so now what I'm going to do is go down here to this conventional charger, 40 amp rate, and I'm just going to hit it. And as you can see, 
it's taken the 40 amps. But this battery is going to charge much faster and do the same thing again. So you can watch it here, raise on the chart. And I'll try to move this. And that, so you can get a good idea. This is where I hit it with a load dyno, as if you're starting a starter. And this is where the battery stays. And this is where it recovers to, and now it's under charge right here. So I'm going to let it charge, and I'll come back, and we'll put it at the normal discharge rate, and watch. Okay, and this has been about five minutes longer. And you can see, here is where we hit it with the load dyno, or the load box. And it went all the way out here under that 50 amp load, and then it, the circuitry decided that's the low point, and we can't go any further than that. And so now it recovers, and then we hit it with a charger, and it's coming back up here. And you can see it's at this voltage right now. So... This is a run time at 50 amps of about almost a half hour, maybe a little bit longer under that continuous load. And of course, as the voltage drops down, um, this is not a regulated circuit. It's just plain old-fashioned analog load box using Dale resistors, 1% resistors, to get these loads. And this is all SCR controlled, so um, when you put them on, they stay on until the uh, circuitry tells it to go off. But you can see here, it's, it's, it's following pretty much almost like a NICAD battery charges here. Even though this is, make no mistakes, this is not a NICAD battery. It's a converted lead-acid battery. So don't make any mistake about that. And this is one of those batteries that Ford said, nope, you got to buy a new one. So that's why we have it here. We do all our testing on it, and it seems to work out pretty well for, for around here. So once again, I'll be back as this gets up to where it's ready to go and then we'll load it again okay we're back and you can see that it's rising up pretty good here and starting to climb pretty good and this is pretty fast charge time because it's been about eight minutes now and I just want to point out once again that even though this is using the Elm and it's still a lead acid battery and it's one of these lead acid batteries that when you take the car into the dealer they say no way you gotta have a new battery and so I, I bought the core from them and she got a new battery so we use that around here and it's been a really good battery for a battery that they say should have been scrapped a long time ago. So I'll be back when this is close to its charge. Okay, I'm back and you can see we're at the end of the charge here. You can see exactly what the battery does. It absorbs the charge all the way and then starts to rise just like this and then right up goes, bounces right up on its curve. And see it's still approaching the very top of the curve. And that's at 6.89 volts. So we'll let it go and I'll come right back. Okay. Now this is the end of the curve and we can just shut it off now. And uh let the battery settle. So, back off, off, and you can watch it here.
And I'll be back when it's settled so you can see where it's going to settle. Okay, I'm back. Okay, you can see now, this is where the battery settled. So now if I run a normal, uh, if I start the load box, it doesn't change much. But it's self-powering, and if I do a 24 amp load, you can watch here. So we'll just do a 24 amp load here. And we'll see how this battery performs. It's going to find a level and sit there. And so, I want to make sure that I can share as much. Remember, it's a 30 amp hour battery, so technically, this is way too much, so we can reset this. And come down here to a 12 amp load. And we'll just let it sit at 12 amps here. And then I'll let it run for a while like that so you can watch it correspond to the chart. This portion right here is where we went from 24 amps to 12 amps and see it bounced back up here. So I just want you to, to see this curve on this battery. 